my time, considering it's it's really, really, really getting limited, and I'm still not getting the traffic really into the site. So um, into my site. So uh, perhaps the the suggestion is my, uh, the best move forward would be to carry on looking to outsource the article writing for easy articles. Um, and for me to sort of perhaps follow this this expert scenario so that um, I am perceived as the expert in the area and at the same time uh, follow on with this, this idea of this rapid product creation so that I have got small things that can be marketed as soon as I get a few people onto my list. Um, that, that's that's an idea. I just appreciate your thoughts on this. Okay. So I hear a few different questions in here. I mean, obviously, what's the best use of your time? I'm also sort of maybe hearing, hey, how do I outsource my articles most effectively? And also I'm hearing, how do I create products quickly? Am I kind of hearing all of that in here? Or is there a, a central yeah. core well, question? Um, I think you covered how to outsource the articles in a previous call. So I've got that one. Um, the product creation, rapid product creation, you know, I, using your matrix uh, and uh, 10 by 10 matrix and, and looking at fast ways of doing that. I think I've got that a handle on that. Again, it's it's one of the one of the main things is the efficient use of my time. It, it's realistically, do I follow? Should I should I perhaps follow the the routine of creating myself as the expert in the area? Perhaps following your your sort of product teachings or whatever, um, or that, that's it really, because I'm just, basically I haven't got any traffic at the moment, and yeah, it is quite frustrating. At the same time, I haven't got a vast amount of time to devote to things, so it's just that optimal balance really. Okay, so here's here's one thought, Mike, okay, when you're, there's a continuum of amount of time that people have available, okay? One is on the really low end like you, very little time, okay? Then there's people that have a medium amount of time, you know, four or five hours a day. They, they work a regular full-time job, but they've decided they're not going to watch TV at night. They're going to take their normal four hours of TV watching and turn it into to, to working online, okay? And then on the other far side of the continuum, you've got people that are full-time online, Okay, or they don't have a job and they may not be making a full time income, but they're they're going to put all of their time into the online, so eight hours a day. So you've got kind of this continuum. And so if you look at the person that's full time and they've got eight hours a day, they could realistically take two hours a day and do each of the four pillars. They could spend two hours on traffic, two hours on leads, two hours on relationship, and two hours on product creation. And things would work out okay, all right? You could take the person that is working four hours a day and maybe, say, two hours a night on two of those and then the next night two hours on each of those, and, and they could make them all happen synergistically, okay? And obviously, I mean, the obvious thing would be that if somebody puts eight hours a day in, they could proceed faster than somebody that puts four hours a day in, could proceed faster than somebody that puts one hour a day in, right? Oh, yep, absolutely. Okay. So the person that's putting one hour a day in, okay, my opinion for that person is that instead of trying to break that one hour into four 15-minute segments, okay, 15 minutes on traffic, 15 minutes on product, you know, 15 minutes on leads, et cetera, et cetera, I, I believe that would be um, counterproductive. You're not, you don't get much done in 15 minutes. What I would probably recommend for that individual would be to say, to recognize that, look, I'm not going to build a full-time business in a month. I, I can't be done. I, I can't do that an hour a day, four or five days a week. It can't be done, okay? No matter what the dream may be, it, it cannot be done, okay? And for that person to say, look, it can't be done this fast. I have the limitation of time. I've got my work. I've got my family. I may have a second job. I've got, you know, whatever else prevents that time from happening. Then what I believe someone should do is focus on one element at a time over a period of time. So one month on one thing, one month on another, one month on another, and one month on another. 
Okay. So, for example, if we can, if we could translate that into learning a new skill, let's say learning how to play tennis. Okay. Let's say you're going to learn how to play tennis, and you can put 20 hours a week into it, and you can hire a coach to work with you for 20 hours a week and play tennis with you for 20 hours a week. Okay. Assuming that your joints can handle it and your muscles can handle it and all that. Okay. Assuming that you could do that, you probably couldn't, but let, let's just say that you could then that tennis instructor could play games with you and, and do an hour's worth of exercises. And I don't play tennis, so I don't know the lingo, but, but they could do, you know, forearm exercises and back arm exercises and serving exercises. And I mean, you could do an hour of each one of those exercises. You could play some games during that time. You, you could really integrate everything together. And then after six months, maybe you're a decent tennis player. Who knows? Okay. Now, if, however, you were only able to take one class three times a week, so you could only play tennis three times a week, an hour on Monday night, an hour on Wednesday night, an hour on Friday night, you're not going to be able to get there that fast. Bottom line, it's not going to happen. It's just like if you take up skiing or you take up snowboarding or you take up swimming or whatever you do. If you're only going to do it three hours a week, you're, you're not going to grow as fast. You're not going to become an Olympic champion in six months if you only have an hour three times a week. And so with a tennis instructor, is going to probably do something different. Instead of spending those three hours integrating lots of different things, what they're probably going to do is they're going to say, okay, Monday night, we're just going to work on your forearm. That's all we're going to do. You're going to hit the ball 500 times. And, and we're just going to work on making that motion um, it just uh, reflexive for you. It's just automatic. Then on Wednesday night, we're going to do something else. And then on Friday night, we're going to do something else. And then next Monday, we're going to do some review, and they will work on something else. Okay? And over the course of the month, you've learned two or three skills or four skills. And next month, you learn a few more. And then the next month, you probably have to go back and review some. And, and all of this is a function of the amount of time that you're able to put in. Okay? So coming back to the, to the Internet marketing, I believe you have a very limited amount of time you simply have to adjust your expectation and realize that just because other people get to a full-time income in 90 days online, you can't. You, you don't have the time to do it, and so you can't grow the same way that they can. Okay, so having – does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's, a, it's a really good point, actually. So having said that, these are the steps that I would recommend that someone go through. You've done some of these pieces. You haven't done them all. And these are the steps that I would – advise someone to go through. Before I give you these steps, we have to understand that when you're starting out, there's a chicken and egg problem. And, and for those of you who don't know, the chicken and egg problem is what came first, the egg or the chicken? Because it takes a chicken to lay an egg, and it takes a leg to, egg to make a chicken. Okay? So what come first? Which, which came first? And the same thing happens here. Which comes first? Subscribers okay, or traffic? Which comes first? The product or the subscribers? And the problem is that if you create a bunch of subscribers and you don't have a product to sell them, you don't make any money. But if you create a product and you have no subscribers, you don't make any money. In both cases, you don't make any money. And so you have to make a choice. Which do you want to do first? Now, one choice would be let's create a product and then go get people to buy it. The problem, the central problem with doing that is most people do a horribly bad job of guessing what other people want to buy. And what I see time and time again is that when people create a product first, they spend the next year or two or three hunting around for people to buy that product. And then they find that there just aren't any people who really want that product. And then they've wasted all their time. Maybe a wonderful product. But nobody wants it. And, and that's a real problem that occurs. Okay? Now, what I always teach is that if you'll start with subscribers first, find out what they want, and then create the product, then in the long run, you'll make more money. And the, the reason, in, in my opinion, the biggest reason that, that my students and people who purchase my techniques and learn from me, they don't do it that way is because it doesn't make sense. Because once they start to do it, they say, well, I'm creating all these subscribers, but I have nothing to sell them. So I'm just going to stop creating subscribers. And, and you know, that, that makes intuitive sense. That you've got it, that, that, that model doesn't work having subscribers that aren't buying from you. Okay? But it, it has the chance of being able to work in the long run 
because once you have subscribers, you can ask the subscribers what they need, and then you can create what it is that they want. Okay? So my recommendation is that you start out with subscribers and you simply recognize that for 90 days, you're not going to sell them anything. They're not going to buy anything. The thing is, you're not making money now anyway, doing it the way that you've been doing it. Okay? So what does it matter if you took 90 days and purposely didn't make any money while you created this list of buyers? You know, there's this thing that happens online. It's weird because online people want to make money happen immediately. They want to create a product and in 30 days be making money. But offline, if you were to create a new product, what would you do? The first thing is you'd start with a focus group. And you, 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 know, you might invest $100,000 in having uh, the consumer organization come in and do consumer testing for you for a year or six months. You'd do testing. And then you'd have six months of testing. you figure out what the product. Then you would send the product, or this new product idea, over to a development department. They would spend six months figuring out what's the best way to have this product look. And then what they would do is once they had that done, they'd drop some plans, and then they would send the plans over to a factory, and the factory would start making the product and putting it in boxes. And at the same time as the factory was making the product and putting it in boxes, for six more months, there'd be an advertising team that would be drawing up advertisements, okay, and talking to the media and getting the ads placed. And then the next six months, you'd finally launch the product. It'd be like 24 months from the time that you thought about it until the time that you released it if it was offline. But then online, it, there's this, this perception that, that it's really easy to get rich quick online. And the reason that there's this perception is because there's a few people out there that make a really big deal about the fact that it happened overnight for them. Okay? And if you even look at what I did, it did not happen overnight for me. Now, you might think it over happened overnight. You know, we, I talk about this idea that, it, that in 13 months I went from zero to 15 grand. Okay? But it, it did not happen overnight. I spent six, eight months studying. Okay? My first three months I made less than $1,000. Okay? But it began to snowball so that in the 13th month I did 15 grand. It looks like it's overnight, but it's not really overnight. Okay? And obviously, there's other people out there that, you know, I, sometimes we hear things like, you know, just sign up for this, and in 30 days, you can make a uh, million dollars. You know, and I, I, maybe I'm exaggerating there, but you, you know what I'm talking about. There's this idea that riches can happen immediately overnight online. But online is no different. Yes, it can work faster, but time is a part of that. And if you don't have the time, you simply aren't going to be able to make it go faster. So having said all of that, what I recommend is have a squeeze page in place, okay? Do what I teach in the expert, my expert steps. Take those expert steps and put all the pieces in place so that someone can see that you're an expert. Then begin driving traffic to the squeeze page. As you're driving traffic to the squeeze page, have an email that goes out that asks your subscribers what their biggest challenge is. As you find out what their biggest challenges are, begin creating the product. Okay, now, I know that what I just said makes it sound really, really simple. Okay? But it, it, I know that in real life it doesn't play out quite that easy. Okay? You are going to have a period of time when you're not making money. Okay, so, for example, the first 30 days you're doing some credibility building things. You're putting the expert uh, items in place. Okay? You're doing those particular things. Guess what? You're not making any money. When you create that squeeze page and you begin driving traffic to it, you're not making any money at all. Now, I will bring up the A word, okay, and that's the affiliate marketing. You can use affiliate marketing to help monetize some of those efforts if you wanted to. I'm not going to teach on it right now. It's an element that you can add in if you want to. It will make you feel good because you get a check every once in a while. Is it going to impact your long-run earnings? Probably not. Okay, probably not, not unless you make an, a specific effort to do affiliate marketing in a big way. But if you're building your own information marketing business, a little affiliate product here and there, sending you a little fish, a, a commission every year and there, is not going to do you any good except maybe mentally. It feels really good when you get a check in the mail. It feels really good when you, that you wake up and there's a payment. You know, your wife or your husband feels really good because you've actually got money coming in the door. Okay, so it's a feel-good thing. But in the long run, Promoting an affiliate product right up front when you only have 12 subscribers, probably not going to do you any good. In fact, probably pulls away because now you've got a genuine person that needs your help, and instead of 
finding out what they need, and then building a product and making them wait for a month to buy your product. You're giving them the easy way out and letting them go buy somebody else's product. And then once they buy somebody else's product, they no longer have a problem, so they no longer tell you what their problems are. And if they don't tell you what their problems are, you don't know what product to create. So it's almost like you're shooting yourself in the foot to make the quick affiliate sale because now you satisfy the person. If they're satisfied, they don't come back and ask you questions. Does, does that make sense? It does, yeah. Um, okay. I've used all very practical and pragmatic sense, so um, thanks. You're welcome. And so the, the next step is they tell you what they need, and then you use my product creation formula to start creating products based on what they need. And then you sell those products to them. And then now, three months, six months down the road, in your case, once you have the products, now you can really get excited about driving more traffic and more traffic and more traffic. Okay, but, but traffic is useless for making sales until you have products, but you have to be willing to drive a few months of traffic with no revenue just to find out what people want. It's just like doing a focus group. If somebody comes up with a new offline idea and they invest $100,000 in a focus group, okay, are they going to make any money off that focus group? When the focus group people come out of the, uh, of the focus room, are they going to, you know, be asked to buy something and, and help them recoup the $100,000. No, it is, a, it is a sunk cost. It is an investment. And that's what driving traffic the first few months is. It is an investment. It's an investment in your future. And, you know, obviously I'm talking to you about three to six months because you don't have all that time. If somebody came to me and they, they've got eight hours a day, boy, I can make all this happen in a month. Okay, because they can put a lot of time and effort into making things happen. You know, I have a client that's not in the Platinum program but came to me, uh, oh, probably six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, and said, look, I've been in your other program for like six weeks, and um, I'm not making any money. I, don't have any I only have like 50 subscribers. Okay, and you know what I did? I wrote back and I said, well, what are you doing? What, I mean, and my what are you doing was probably three basic questions. How many articles do you have? have you written in the last six weeks? Um, how many subscribers? And maybe I didn't ask that because she'd already told me. And how many sales have you made? Okay, something basic like that. And she came back and she said something along the lines of, well, you know, I've written 47 articles in the last six weeks. And um, I've got 50 subscribers and I've made one sale. Okay. And so, you know, I wrote back and I said, well, how much time are you putting in your online business each week? Oh, eight hours a day. And now, you know, instantly when I hear this, eight hours a day for six weeks is 40 hours a week times six, 240 hours, and all you've produced is 50 articles and 50 subscribers. And to her credit, she had produced a seven-day e-course that people could download, okay? Um, well, not download, but, you know, go to each day. And I think that was it. She might have been working on a 30-day program that she had a few days in there. Okay. Now, when I hear that, I can see that there's a gross mismanagement of time. I don't know what the other hours are being used for, okay, but I can guess. They're being used for surfing. They're being used, used for wondering if they're writing on the right topic. They're being used for answering emails. They're being used for reading all the emails that come to you from affiliates. We're all guilty of all of this, okay? Um, we, you know, I, I can guess what those hours are being used for. I really can, but I don't know on an individual per basis. And so I wrote her back and I said, um, well, let me ask you a question. How long does it take you to write an article? And I think she told me half an hour. And so I responded. I said, well, let me ask you this. I mean, you're working eight hours a day. So if all you were to do was write two articles an hour for eight hours, you'd have 16 articles a day. And if all you did was do that five days a week, you'd have 80 articles. And if for six weeks you'd have written 80 articles a week, how many articles would you have? And she wrote me back and told me what the number was. And, and so what is it, 480 articles. And so obviously my next question is going to be, well, let me ask you this. If you had 480 articles online right now, how many subscribers and sales do you think you'd have? Okay, and then obviously at some point there, there's this light bulb that goes off and it goes, oh, wow. That day, she wrote like 20 articles, okay? And I challenged her. There were a few more emails that went back and forth, and I challenged her. I said, how much time do you have left today? Use it to write some articles. 
And in the next week, she wrote over 100 articles. The next week, she wrote a full-length ebook. The next week, she wrote a sales page. This week, she had her first sale. Okay, she's building subscribers. She's still writing stuff. She's writing her second e she's writing her second ebook now. And it's probably been three weeks, maybe four weeks since we had that discussion. What's the difference between what happened the first six weeks and what's happened these last three? It's not the time she's put in. Now, maybe because she's more effective, she's working an extra hour at night. I don't know. Okay, but in the, the big picture here is it's not the time. It's that now she's using that time to actually do this work actually do this work and so I have no idea what else is going on with your time Mike but part of it is you don't know what to do next and I, I've given you what to do next unfortunately I think what happens sometimes is that because there's such a limited amount of time it's tempting to say well I can't really do exactly what Sean said to do next because that doesn't make me any money yet I need to go do something that makes me money but you can't make the money until all the pieces are in place. It's just like you can't become an Olympic-level tennis player until you learn the basics. It's kind of like if you go to karate class, you can't be a, become a black belt until you like learn a whole bunch of basics and you do them a thousand times so that when you go to block a punch, it always works exactly the same way every time. And the only way you get that is through practice. It's like golf. Some of you golf, okay? you've got to hit that golf ball exactly the same way. How many times? A thousand times? Two thousand times? Before you can, you can decide which, which club do I need to use and exactly what position do I need to be and exactly how much force do I need to have for 150 yards. Oh, now I need 140 yards. That's different, isn't it? The stroke might, and I don't play golf, so I don't know if the stroke would be different or the, the club that you use would be different or whatever the case is. There's going to be a difference. And how do you get the expertise in that difference? You hit a ball a 1,000 times, 140 yards. How do you do it for 50 yards? You hit it a 1,000 times for 50 yards. There's no such thing as overnight success in golf. There's no such thing as overnight success in tennis. There's no such thing as overnight success in Internet marketing. It's exactly the same thing. Mike, does that answer? I know I kind of went on some rabbit trails, but sometimes I find that these rabbit trails really help to illuminate the issue, make it alive so that you can implement it. Has what I've shared with you, do you believe that that's going to help you on this idea of what's the best use of your time? Yes, uh, yeah, very much so. Uh, yeah, I totally appreciate the the rabbit holes, and the, yeah, I don't think they're rabbit holes at all. They're not diversions. They add to the uh, add to the weight of your advice. So, um, and it is a bit of a realization for me that yeah, I do procrastinate, and I do I don't use my time efficiently, uh, and that's one of my biggest things that I've got to do. So, um, by focusing on one thing, perhaps it'll be easier to use it more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, one quick one. I, I, yeah, I know you, a while back, you started to look at my, my squeeze page process and my ethical bribe or whatever. 